Today on People Now, Jessica Simpson like you've never heard her before. Past sexual abuse, alcohol and pill dependency and how Jessica found her way out. It's all in this week's People Cover Story. We'll tell you how a mom of four's tragic death became a life-changing miracle to 12 other patients. Christian rapper Toby Mac's son's cause of death has been released as fans and the family continue to cope with their sudden loss. Also today, what we've learned about Pamela Anderson's secret wedding. Have a good one. Room with life. Oh, oh my God. I got it out of here. We are finding out all we need to know about Nora from Queens with the cast of Aquafina's new series. Plus, Christy Brinkley steps in as Circus Ringmaster. She's here telling us about her exciting gig, her Prosecco, and more live today on People Now. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome to People Now. We're halfway through the week. I'm holding things down here in New York while Jeremy is in LA for the week. Nice life, living his best life. We have a lot to get to today. So Jeremy, take it away. Yeah, they've, uh, let's hear it for LA. Come on, guys. Yeah, I pumped him up a little bit. They have given me an avocado pillow. Yeah. It's a really, it's a feel it. Thank you for Looks that. Good, no, Jeremy. I asked for palm tree, no budget. Thank you. <laughs> Um, all right, so there's a lot, a lot to get to today. Here's what you need to know and what's trending for today. Jessica Simpson opening up about her past alcohol and pill dependency in this week's People Cover Story. In it, Simpson shares an excerpt of her new book called Open Book, where she says, quote, I was killing myself with all the drinking and pills. She says that being sexually abused as a young girl and various career pressures as she grew up led to her self-medicate or led her to self-medicate for years, a dependency that would later prompt her doctor to tell her that her life was in danger. In 2010, the singer found her soulmate in Eric Johnson. They married in 2014. They now have three kids ranging in age from 10 months to seven years. But in one of the book's most moving scenes, Simpson writes about hitting rock bottom after a Halloween party at their home in late 2017. That's when she told her closest friends, quote, something's got to stop. If it's the alcohol that's doing this and making things worse, then I quit. Her friends gathered around her in a group hug. They haven't left her side ever since. With the added support of her parents and doctors, plus twice a week therapy, she's been sober since that day and calls her newfound clarity a continual gift. Stay tuned. We're going to have more on this story later in the show, including the dark times that led Simpson to that point and what is next for her. Stick around for that. We move on now to some sad news for Monty Python fans. Terry Jones, one of the original members of the renowned British comedy troupe, has died. In a statement to the BBC, Jones's family revealed that he died on Monday with his wife by his side after a long, extremely brave, but always good-humored battle with a rare form of dementia. The statement goes on to remember Jones as a, quote, kind, funny, warm, creative, and truly loving man whose uncompromising individuality, relentless intellect, and extraordinary humor has given pleasure to countless millions across six decades. The comedy troupe Monty Python formed in 1969 for the sketch comedy series Monty Python's Flying Circus. It included John Cleese, Terry Gilliam, Eric Idle, Michael Palin, and uh, the late Graham Chapman. The series paved the way for a number of Monty Python films. Now, Jones's family concluded their statement saying they're thankful to have, quote, lived in the presence of an extraordinary, talented, playful, and happy man living a truly authentic life. In his words, lovingly frosted with glucose. Jones is survived by his wife and three children. He was 77 years old. <clears throat> we move on to this tough story. A mom of four in Oregon who died just days after giving birth is changing lives through her own tragedy, donating her organs to save the lives of 12 other patients in need. Kathleen Thorson fell ill after giving birth to baby number four on December 29th. According to a GoFundMe campaign set up for her husband, uh, Jesse, and their children, Kathleen was rushed to the emergency room when she suffered an intracerebral hemorrhage. Despite several surgeries, doctors were unable to save her. But before she passed, Kathleen made her wish known. She wanted to save as many lives as possible by donating 12 organs, including her heart and lungs. This is super rare. According to one of her nurses, the chances that someone is a donor candidate of this magnitude is less than one in a million. But Kathleen's wish came true. Her story was even brought to the attention of Kristen Bell's baby line, Hello Bello, who awarded the Thorson family a year's supply of wipes and diapers. Really incredible. As of Wednesday morning, the GoFundMe campaign had raised more than $100,000. Richard Stubbs, the organizer of that page, says the extra money raised will go toward another of Kathleen's dreams, to build a garden for her children. On to this story, Toby Mac's young son, Truett Foster McKeon's cause of death 
has been revealed with the rep for the Christian rapper confirming to people that McKeon died of an accidental overdose of fentanyl and amphetamines on October 23rd. The Davidson County Medical Examiner's Office previously confirmed that medics responded to a cardiac arrest call at the family's Tennessee home. He was only 21 years old. McKeon was an aspiring musician, and over the years, he also joined forces with his father on several tracks. Toby Mac wrote numerous songs inspired by his son, including Scars, and then this clip you're seeing now, 21 Years. This song was released earlier this month, honoring his son after his passing. Toby Mac told fans at the time that it was a song that he, quote, never wanted to write. Toby Mac also released an emotional statement after his son's death, saying in part, quote, Truett Foster McKeon had joy that took the room when he entered. He was a magnetic son and brother and friend. If you met him, you knew him, and you remembered him. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, you can contact the Substance Abuse Helpline. It's 1-800-662-HELP. All right, Maya Shibutani is taking baby steps toward recovery. The Olympic figure skater shared an update on her health on Tuesday, saying that she's, quote, doing a little better after doctors removed a malignant tumor from one of her kidneys last month. Maya posting these pictures on Instagram with a caption reading in part, more pics from my walks. Maya revealed to fans in a candid Instagram last month that doctors had discovered a mass on her kidney after she visited the emergency room in October for a stomach virus. Shortly before Christmas, she successfully underwent surgery to remove that mass. Now, five days later, she shared that the tumor was unfortunately malignant, explaining, quote, this wasn't the news I was hoping for, but I'm beyond thankful that it was detected early and that my surgery went well. No further treatment is required at this time. On New Year's Eve, Maya shared some reflections, calling it a, quote, beautiful year and decade with a complicated ending, but adding that she was going into 2020, quote, fueled by passion, pushed by desire, and inspired by the world. We wish her all the best. All right, we're gonna throw it back to Andrea now in New York for more for us in Star Trek. Yes, we are kicking off Star Trek today with Kate Middleton's continued royal tour for kids. On Wednesday, Kate attended a baby sensory class at the innovative Ely and Caro Children's Center in Cardiff, Wales, where she heard all about the support the center provides for parents and their kids. And Kate shared how she would have benefited from the center when she first became a new mother, saying, quote, I was chatting to some of the moms. It was the first year and I just had George, William was still working with Search and Rescue, and we came up here and I had a tiny, tiny baby in the middle of Anglesey. It was so isolated, so cut off, I didn't have any family around, and he was doing night shifts, so if only I'd had a center like this. And she added, I see amazing work you're doing here in so many areas. It's just bringing it to light. The critical work you're doing has a massive social and economic impact later down the years. The Royal Mom has been on a 24-hour tour of the UK. It started in Birmingham on Tuesday afternoon, where she hoped to help launch a survey to hear society's views about raising the next generation. It is the hope that the survey results will guide Kate's future work as she strives to give children the tools and foundations to lead healthy and fulfilling lives. All right, and in more royal news, Meghan Markle made a surprise visit to check on some animals before she headed back to Canada to start her next chapter with Prince Harry and baby Archie. Sussex Royal's Instagram revealed on Wednesday that Meghan privately visited the animal welfare charity Mayhew earlier in January. She announced the organization as one of her first patronages last year. The post shows two images, one of which has Meghan squatting down to pet a German shepherd and says that Meghan, quote, applauds the people at Mayhew for the vital work that they do every day. According to the charity's Instagram page, during Meghan's visit, she was shown new kennels and met some of the animals. Meghan memorably visited Mayhew in January 2019 for her first official visit, where she spoke about the joys of animal adoption. However, because she was pregnant at the time, she noted that her and Harry's hands were too full to add another pet. The couple currently has her dog Guy and the family's new Labrador with them in Canada. And one of the earliest signs that the couple was serious about a move to North America was the fact that they brought both dogs with them during their holiday at the end of 2019. If you're bringing the pups with, might be a sign. Jason Momoa is a superhero on and off the screen. The Aquaman star took a break from filming to hang out with patients at the UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh on Monday. He shared several photos of the visit on his Instagram, writing, the greatest part of being Aquaman is making children happy, spreading aloha. He also shared a video of him in an arm wrestling competition with his new pal Joshua. 
Jason writes on Instagram in part, me and Joshua bet that if he beat me in arm wrestling, he gets to have my trident. See you on the set of Aquaman 2, Joshua. This is just so sweet and heartwarming. The Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh tweeted their thanks to Jason, shared some sweet pictures from the day. Now this isn't the first time Jason has spent some time hanging out with children in need. In July of 2019, Jason teamed up with the Make-A-Wish Foundation to make dreams come true. He gave kids a tour of the Warner Brothers Studios and an inside look at some of the costumes from its biggest movie franchises. He captioned the sweet pics in part, my first at Make-A-Wish America, I will do this for life. And he is a real life superhero. Those are your Star Tracks for today. Stay with us. We have more from Jessica Simpson's stunning new memoir and her exclusive interview in this week's People Cover Story. Plus, cocktails with Christy. Christy Brinkley is going to be live in New York showing Andrea two sparkling drink recipes that you will want to try at home. Stick around. Let's move on to this, guys. Let's talk celeb relationships. It's part of People Now's new segment, Heart Monitor. Loving it. We start off with Brandon Thomas Lee sending his best wishes to mom Pamela Anderson after her surprise marriage to movie mogul John Peters. Brandon saying in a statement to Fox News that he is incredibly happy for his mom, adding that he's wishing them luck in this next chapter. Pamela secretly married John on Monday. Her publicist telling people, quote, they're very much in love. This is her fifth marriage and his third. Their wedding comes 30 years after the couple first dated and a few months after they rekindled their relationship. They've been keeping the romance out of the spotlight up until now. And about his love for his new bride, John told The Hollywood Reporter, quote, there are beautiful girls everywhere. I could have my pick, but for 35 years, I've only wanted Pamela. And he adds, she makes me wild in a good way. She inspires me. Meanwhile, Pamela expressed her love with a poem in which she calls John the original bad boy of Hollywood and admits that his life used to scare her, but now they're both ready to love each other without any conditions. Such a sweet story there. We, of course, are very happy for them. Wish them the best. Let's talk Tim Tebow again. He's celebrating forever with his new wife, Demi Lino Peters. We talked about this yesterday. Tim telling us in this week's issue of People that hours before their South African wedding, he felt, quote, the kind of adrenaline that he feel before a big game. Don't worry, though, their January 20th wedding went off without a fumble. That's a pun. For the emotional ceremony, Demi Lee wore a custom David's bridal gown, while Tim was even seen tearing up a little, uh, tearing up, excuse me, during their wedding vows. It gets emotional. After the ceremony, the newlyweds joined their guests for an elegant sit-down dinner of South African and American dishes. Now, Demi Lee revealed to us that Tim was involved in all the wedding planning, saying that he cared about all the details. The happy couple met in 2018 at Tim's annual Night of Shine event, a series of proms for people with special needs. And Tim says their connection was instant, that they both knew the other was very special. After their honeymoon in the Maldives, the newlyweds planned to split their time between New York and Florida, and they couldn't be more excited to start their lives together. Tim saying, quote, I've been waiting my entire life for someone special. Then I found Demi, and all of my dreams have come true. She was 100% worth the wait. Good for them. All right, now onto this story. It's more about friendship than love. Despite what fans everywhere might be wanting, might be kind of shipping, hoping, praying for, whatever. And this week's people of it, our issue of people, sources tell us that Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston, quote, want nothing but happiness for each other. Their reunion at the 2020 SAG Awards took the internet by storm. The two exes greeted each other warmly backstage after each had won a SAG Award. Andrea and I were only feet away from the moment. A source telling people Jen was happy for Brad. They congratulate each other and that was it. The source also reveals that Jennifer is happy to have Brad back in her life as a friend. So stop it, everybody. The two stars were married for five years before their divorce in 2005. They've been more public about their friendship in the last year. In February 2019, Jennifer celebrated her 50th birthday with a star-studded bash at the Sunset Tower Hotel in West Hollywood. Among her guests was Brad, who also sent her a present before the party. All right, that is it for today's Heart Monitor. Back to you in New York, Andrea. Yes, in this week's People Cover Story, Jessica Simpson is getting candid about the years she numbed herself with alcohol and pills. And she shares an excerpt from her new memoir, Open Book, where she says that there's power in the truth. Here with a story on Jessica's journey to self-empowerment is People's East Coast News Editor, Liz McNeil. Thank you so much for being here. She is so brave, isn't she? So brave. The book is so brave, and she's really powerful. Yeah, and in the article she says that, you know, she became exactly what she didn't want to be. So tell us more about what she was going through and where this all stemmed from. You know, th there was a lot of emotional pain and trauma. She uh, reveals for the first time that she was sexually abused as a young girl. Um, she had anxiety, she had a lack of self-confidence. There was a lot of emotional pain there. And then she sort of skyrockets to fame at uh, 19 years old and uh, there's a lot of numbing and um, sort of, 
you know, doing whatever she has to do to, to keep going. So there's so much depth to her. It was really um, amazing to meet her and talk to her. Yeah, and you said she was incredibly open. There was nothing off limits. She talks about some of her relationships and it was interesting. She said that when she dated John Mayer, she actually would drink to kind of mask her pain and because of her anxiety. So how did those relationships really impact her? You know, she really learned a lot from all of these relationships and you sort of see how she grows up, right? First, there's, there's her first relationship with Nick and one thing she's Nick Lachey and she says, we got crushed by the media and by ourselves. I mean, that kind of fame was so crazy, right? She's one of the first reality TV stars. Mm -hmm. she's, a, she's a newlywed. So there's sort of what she learns from that relationship. And then with John, there's this really uh, intense dynamic where she feels both powerful because of his uh, attraction to her, but also weak because she doesn't feel confident, right? He's smart, he's very clever. Sometimes she's worried about you know, how she sounds. So there was also some masking and numbing to sort of, you know, numb that kind of pain. Yeah, so she's been through a lot. Right now she's doing really well. She got married in 2014. She has three adorable kids. You met the youngest, yeah, Birdie. Yeah, Is Birdie just the sweetest? <laughs> like, so cute. <laughs> yeah. But how had drinking kind of affected her home life? You know, she writes so honestly and candidly and talks about she really is the mom who gets up early to, you know, to French braid her, her daughter's hair and is always wants to be there for her kids at school and be there when they get home. But she also came to this really painful realization that there were also times when she wasn't there for them. This all sort of comes to a head at this moment when she has a Halloween party in 2017 and she realizes that she can't really get her kids uh, in their costumes for a trick or treating and she realizes that she she's not really there for them. And that realization really somehow galvanizes her to, to say, I, I'm ready to get some help. Wow, so she turned things around. What has her support system been like? I mean, who really was there for her to help her through the dark times? She is so much about her, her, her circle of friends. There's such a loyal group of friends, many of whom that she knew growing up in Texas that sort of surround her and support her and love her. I got to meet some of them, they're great. And uh, her friends did want to help her, but of course, in those kinds of situations, sometimes you worry that if you confront your friend or say something to your friend that they, if they're not ready, they might not be ready to hear that. But when Jessica sort of opened the door and said, I'm, I think it's time for me, I, I, I'm ready to, to change, then they were right there for her and they're still right there at her side. Her parents, she also had some uh, doctors and a, a therapist. Yeah, I'm so happy for her. I'm yeah. always rooting for Jessica Simpson. Yeah. So it's really nice to hear she's in a good place. Yep. What is next for her and what did she hope readers take away from this? You know, she really wants to help people. And like when you read the book and you talk to her, like there's something about her, she has this uncanny ability to reach people like she is relatable it's, it's that's like a great funny quality about her and I when you read the book and when you hear her talk you're like oh like she wants people to know that she's lived through something really difficult and I love what she said there's power in the truth because by speaking her truth she hopes that she can help others be open deal with their pain you know learn how to sort of say that right feelings are okay these feelings that were can be so frightening sometimes to us so difficult she's like that you know you'll be okay yeah. so she really wants to help people inspire people this will definitely inspire a lot of people thank Good. you so much for joining thank us liz you. and for more on jessica simpson's story pick up a copy of this week's people on newsstands friday all right now over to jeremy james beard award-winning pastry chef creator of the coconut or the cronut and other tasty treats now dominic ansel is teaching the masses how to bake his iconic pastries with a series of lessons available on Masterclass. He stopped by People Now to teach Andrew and me a sweet trick or two. Take a look. What are we making here? We're making something fun, something simple, something quick. Our miniature madeleines. So it's something that we actually serve at the bakery. Uh, we make them to order. So when you order them, we pipe them. We'll bake it for you. It only takes four minutes. Oh, wow. wow. Seems simple. So where do we begin? So we begin with uh, the butter and the honey. Okay. So we're going to uh, put this on a stove to How much melt. butter are we talking here? It looks like a just, couple sticks. Just a least. little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fresh people, they love for butter. OK. So. That and, and the South. I'm from the South. We love butter down there too. And so. the Midwest. And the Midwest. <laughs> Everyone loves butter. <laughs> and some honey. And some honey. And we're also going to put uh, the brown sugar uh, here to melt with this. We're going to put it on the stove very gently, uh, very low uh, temperature, just to melt it. So, next step, 
Are you actually guys going to help me? I don't really want to work today. Oh yeah, we can. We definitely so, help. You gotta start with the flour in here. Okay, I'll pour you whisk. Do you yeah. Do that? Okay, here we go. Dream so, team, right so, here. So, it's like you guys don't need me here. <laughs> oh, we need to add the sugar. Okay. okay. Here we go. Whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's so I'm, everything. I'm of course, so is measure that. If you do this at home, I highly suggest you use a scale. Right. So measure everything, scale everything, it's very important to be precise. Okay. okay. And then, no, 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 oh, no, no, no. Okay, then sorry. we're gonna use this one. This mm -hmm. is the baking powder. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a little bit of salt. Salt mixed in, yes. just like a pinch? Oh, yeah, there's there's okay. a recipe. Great oh, there's a recipe. Okay, Great for Jeremy. So we, we mix go. all of this Thank together. Uh, very important that we do this batter ahead of time. So yep. usually, if you do it in the morning, you could use this at night. I always uh, highly suggest for people to do it the day before. It's always better. There's baking powder. Uh, it's a leaven agent, okay. so you need to let it rest in your fridge in order to get this nice, like light, perfect texture. Kind of a cohesive exactly. uh, feel. Okay. Then we're gonna add okay. the eggs one at a time. For this? To get, How many eggs? Get going. I There's think you should do it while eggs. I. Eggs. Oh, okay. No, no, no! One at a time. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, oh my! You're gonna mess up our recipe. <laughs> <laughs> then we're gonna add okay. the eggs one at a time. For this? To get, How many eggs? Get going. I That's think you should do it while eggs. I. Oh, okay. No, no, no! One at a time. Oh my gosh! You're gonna mess up our recipe. Oh my goodness. Okay, Jeremy, get that egg out. <laughs> well, <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> that's that'll be fine. Turn these out. We already messed it up. Well, I, so that's, normally that's, it would have been two. So normally, it would have been one or two at a time? One or two at a time. I didn't so know that. So yeah. the most important is that we want the, uh, the flour to absorb the liquid little by little. So that's why it's, <laughs> you don't, yeah. you're, you're, you don't want sense. any like lumps. So you yeah, want to add the, the like eggs a little, little by little. Lumpy. So this is your phone, Jeremy. <laughs> Masterclass or something like that today, <laughs> thanks to me, sorry. Okay. What's the most important step that you need to get right? To the, get eggs the, the, the eggs, eggs. <laughs> As you can that's see. The most no, that's fine, that's gonna be fine. Uh, well, I'll, should we I'll just put this it. last one in or no? Oh, wait, wait, let me mix this first. Okay. <laughs> You're proving that it can be perhaps. So maybe it'll be a little mess, but it can be safe. So here we have our melted butter. So the butter just melted. There's no need to uh, to like boil it or you, you just want the sugar to be melted mm -hmm. with the butter. So here we're gonna mix this. This smells amazing. By the way. Okay, yeah. What's the pouring technique here? <laughs> this, we don't want to mess this it up. There's no technique. I'll do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> step, step aside. Please. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll stay right over here. That's it. Okay. So you see, you don't even need a stand mixer. You can do it in a mixing right. bowl like this. Yeah, not so bad at all. At the end, it shouldn't be lumpy. It should be like pretty, uh, pretty smooth. How many does this make? This will make a lot. So the mold is right here. Mm -hmm. So it's a tiny mold. We make mini madeleines because it bakes faster, and it's easy to just to eat them. The way we present it at the bakery, we'll serve them in a little basket here. How many do you usually make at a time at the bakery? It's whatever people order, so we make sure. either 10 or 20. Okay. We make them fresh to order only, and a little bit of powdered sugar to finish them. There we go. Try this. Ooh. One for you. Thank you. Mm. And one for me. Mm. Yeah, despite all the egg drama, that actually turned out, ama it tasted amazing. The recipe and more fun tips and tricks, you can head on over to masterclass.com. Now we switch gears to this, watch. I live with my parents. Grandma loves Nora. Ow! I wish I had purpose like you, you dumb Hey boy. We need to find you a job. <laughs> Pull over now or I'm calling the cops. It's a surprise, but it's Have a the good one. Room Oh my God, I got it out of here. Aquafina is Nora from Queens premieres tonight on Comedy Central, and trust me, you do not want to miss this hilarious new show. It's so good. Nora is Aquafina's real name, and the series is based on her own life. Raised in Queens by her dad and her grandma, Nora has to figure out how to handle, well, life. Vidi Wong and Lori Tan Chin play those roles, and they opened up about what it meant to them to work with Aquafina. I really wanted to be on the show because I was really fascinated by her and her kind of career choices and her sensibility and her artistry. And, and so I've learned from working with her that she's a, really a visionary about her own career and her life in, to the point where she surrounds herself with really interesting people and people who 
uh, share her vision of what the industry can be. She's hired a lot of women and a lot of people of color. And th these are sets that, uh, well, to be on a set like this is, is not that normal actually mm -hmm. for us. So, so that's really a nice, very, a nice feeling because throughout the set, there is a kind of a family vibe and a, a sense of everybody being in, in this together, which is really nice and it all comes from her. Yeah, and do you feel like you took on that fatherly role and for you kind of that grandma role? I do. I feel like I do. <laughs> yeah. I feel very protective of her. Yeah. I feel, you know, she goes on the Golden Globe. She wins a Golden Globe. She says, hey, Dad, I got a job. And I think she's talking to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, like, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, um, but I do feel, you know, you, 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 you can't help it. You have this sense of the relationship that you are um, doing in make-believe. And, and if you're, if you're, you're hopefully a good actor, you, you, you kind of take some of it on personally. Yeah. And and that's how I felt. And I think you, you I see that in you guys too. Oh yeah. And and plus this is an Asian show yeah. and it's produced and written, executive yeah. produced. And, very rare. You know. It's mm. very rare. I mean we, we can't say it enough because we're so yeah. proud of it in that way. In the series, we see Nora take on a few odd jobs from being a driver to a cam girl. So we got the lowdown on what strange jobs Beatty and Lori had before they made it as actors. I made, uh, I can say the brand, Mrs. Fields chocolate chip cookies, yeah. um, until I couldn't stand them anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. It was the best job ever, <laughs> until I did it for like two weeks, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's like terrible. I you know, like turned myself off of chocolate chip, chip cookies for quite oh, a few wow. years. I'm over it now. Wow. <laughs> You'll um, have a cookie now and yeah, then Yeah, I'll have now. a cookie now. Well, how about you? Well, as a, as a dancer, I came here for, to be a dancer, and you know, the uh, one of the jobs that, uh, I thought I could go up for is a go-go dancer at Judy Heller's. <laughs> it's a popular place on 6th Avenue no. and 10th Street. I didn't make it. They didn't hire me. You know, <laughs> they needed a tall person with you were bazooms. <laughs> you know, I didn't have any of that, you know. I had a backside, but not the bazooms. <laughs> Christy Brinkley is a busy person these days. She's all set to be the guest ringmaster at the Big Apple Circus in New York City for three consecutive nights starting January 30th. And she's also a very successful businesswoman with her organic Prosecco called Bellissima. She joins us now and she's making some drinks. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much. So, for we're going to talk about the Prosecco me. and this goodness in a bit. Yeah. First of all, let's talk about being a ringmaster. Why are you I the perfect know. ringmaster? Oh, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> um, I mean, the Big Apple Circus has asked me if I wanted to be a ring, ringmaster before, and I was never available to do it. So, when they asked me this time, I thought, yeah, I'm actually free on those days, and my last, um, the last day, the next day, I have a birthday. And I thought, what greater way to wrap up a year, you know, than run off with the circus? And uh, so, you know, I just get to, to be the ringmaster for these three shows, the 30th, the 31st, and the first. My daughter Alexa is coming and she's going to be singing at one of the shows. Amazing! Um, probably the one on the first because that's like sort of my birthday show. Yeah, that's going to be so fun. I have to ask you about this. Before Dancing with the Stars last season, you had an injury your wrist. Yes. So how are you feeling now? I know there's maybe an upcoming procedure. Yeah, I, I'm actually going on Friday. I'm going to get PRP and some sort of manipulation to my shoulder, my wrist, and my thumb because I, it's still healing, but not fast enough. I mean, it's been yeah. four months, and uh, and a ringmaster needs to be able to do this. And for those pictures, I had to literally lift my oh. arm up, hold it. Okay, hold it, hold it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know. So hopefully, on Friday with the I've done PRP before. Yeah. Um, when I was doing Chicago the Musical, I had to do a little PRP on my hip, mm -hmm. and it worked. It's okay. really good stuff. Well, so. I know your hips work because when I interviewed you for Dancing with the Stars, you showed me this hip movement. Oh yeah, and you yeah. you got it down. You can't see it behind this table, yes. but she's got a good hip movement. Um, <laughs> let's get to drinking. You have you're gonna make a drink for us here. Yes. Well, so you know the we Super have? Bowl is coming up, and people are gonna want to like entertain their guests as they watch or their tailgate parties or whatever. And so I want to say off the bat, this Bambini, our Bellissima, it's our Prosecco in a smaller bottle. You pop the cork, you put the sipper on top. Mm -hmm. These are reusable. And, uh, and what this does for you is it makes this 
in, into like as convenient as any beer. You can throw it in a cooler. You don't need to pack the glass. You just Perfect. pack your Bambini. And uh, it's delicious Prosecco and, and you know, who doesn't love a nice ice cold Prosecco? Yeah, what's the on? first cocktail called? Um, okay, our first cocktail we're gonna make is uh, with my Bella Spriz, which is my cocktail line. And um, it's delicious. You may have heard of an Aperol Spriz because it was a very heavily advertised and it's a very popular drink. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I decided, hey, they need a little competition. <laughs> and uh, because I don't advertise, I can give it to you for half the price. And this is and, 3 p.m., is the that flavor. the name of the drink? Oh, are we gonna do the 3 p.m. drink? Oh. Yeah, let's do. Oh, let's do the 3 p.m. Okay, the 3 p.m. is named 3 p.m. because uh, the bartender at the Big Apple Circus named it for a friend of hers who was once told that you can't be a mixologist behind the bar after 3 p.m. So, girl power. Yeah, she I said, like it. No way, <laughs> we're gonna make a drink. Now, that drink is gonna be on keg at the circus, so come on down and taste okay. it. Okay. And um, I actually don't know how to make it. <laughs> well, that could be a problem. <laughs> Do you know what's in it? <laughs> I thought I was gonna have my recipe. The 3 p.m. drink is sort of complicated. So why don't I well, show what is you? It <laughs> what does it taste like? I know. What's one that what, what's one that you know how to make? Let's start with okay. that. All right, this one, this is mine, and it has the recipe on the back. Okay, so, so now we have the recipe. That okay. should you should be able and to do that is, one. This is a Bellissima Spriz, and you just put some of it. I just eyeball it. If you want to make it more dietetic, okay, you add the blue, which is our unique one and only zero sugar prosecco. Um, and it is delicious. Okay, now I always eyeball it and I go, oh, I want the color to be a little bit redder for Valentine's Day okay. coming up. And then I add an orange and a little tiny bit of club soda. Is that what this is? Nope, that's simple syrup. Well, a little splash of club soda, just, I don't know why. <laughs> just but that's what for they fun. Do. And so this is and good to go? This is good to go. Mm really good. Isn't that delicious? Yeah. It's very fresh. It's citrusy. Yeah, it's, fresh. it's, it's good. It's delightful. It's you wonderful. launched Bellissima in 2016. So what inspired yes. you to create it? Well, I really believe that we need to like reduce the amount of chemicals we put in our bodies. So my line, I am very proud to say, is 100% organic. Um, organic grapes and they are um, when you drink an organic wine, you're avoiding like up to 52 chemicals that might be on each grape. Mm -hmm. So uh, I feel really good and really strong about that. And um, and also, uh, it's also vegan. And when I first heard that, I was like, vegan, what does that mean? I mean, of course you don't put meat in a wine, but a lot of wines are filtered through animal parts. Mm -hmm. And unless it's certified vegan, you're probably getting some trace amounts of animal parts like fish guts and horse, I mean, which a lot of people don't even know about. So I think that's so yeah. important. So it is important, and we are certified, and you know we've got it on here. We're also all natural, and this, as I mentioned before, is the most unique one, being zero sugar, zero carbs, zero guilt. So you can have as yes. much as you want. Yes, <laughs> and then another great cocktail that we have um, is our. Um, elderflower, mm -hmm. which is delicious. And I also, I know that we were also gonna make like, um, well, I know that- We don't have a ton of time, so let's do a really quick one. Okay, so it. let's do a really quick one, right yeah. here. Bada bing, we pour this Because sometimes in. at home you need we just put, a really quick Okay, fix. fill the glass with some ice, because I don't want to run out of time. We can put it in at the end. Throw in a little bit of that. Throw in, let's do it with our DOC, which is our Prosecco, mm -hmm. straight from Treviso, Italy. Yeah, and speaking and of that, Italy and traveling, you recently had a vacation in Turks and Caicos, right? Oh, it's like I, a lot of fun. I love. But it's the special Turks to you to have Caicos. beach vacations, right? Pardon me. It's really special for you to have. Yeah, beach vacations? we have a home down there, and um, we've been going there for like 20 years. It is our place. Taste that. Okay. It's we love diving and being under the water and in the sea and. That's really Isn't good. that so good? And your kids and, are drinking and age now. Ice. I didn't put the ice because I was afraid of running out of time. <laughs> no, this is great. But I was going to say, your kids are of drinking age now, officially. Yes. What are their favorite drinks? Um, well, 
Oh gosh, it's tough to say. I would say the Bambinis are really very popular because they're so transportable. And oh, there's a picture on the screen now of my son Jack <laughs> and Alexa and Sailor. They're all and grown up. They're all grown up. Sailor's actually in vogue oh, right now. I know they're doing uh, so well. What's your favorite way to spend time with them? Um, well, um, apart from, I mean, w we love doing adventures together. We love, like, when we're down in the Turks and Caicos, we were doing a lot of diving on the reefs, and uh, we went really far out on this trip, um, which was kind of necessary because there is some degra degradation, sorry, <laughs> degradation of the uh, reef, which is really upsetting to see. But um, but when you go out a little bit further, we still found some beautiful places with the sea fans and lots of life and beauty, and I love that. Sounds that. wonderful. I was just in Hawaii, yeah. so I'm missing those days, especially hearing you talk about Turks and Caicos. All right, yes. thank you so much for coming oh, to see and bringing so all of much. this. And if you're in New York, be sure to catch her as the guest ringmaster at the Big Apple Circus yes. at Lincoln Center. And I'll put Center. The, uh, the recipe for the um, on my website for the yes. three o'clock drink. So check it out there. Yes. Also, make sure to try out her organic Prosecco Bellissima or yeah great back to Jeremy <laughs> uh, coming up tomorrow guys we're talking with the cast of the horror film The Turning including Brooklyn Prince and Finn Wolfhard plus it's one of our favorite annual events we're celebrating Animal Planet's Puppy Bowl live with some adorable dogs I can't believe I'm gonna miss that I did that thanks for watching see you next time